drink is far more expensive than in any of dozens of comfortable public houses within a few hundred yards. Yet, against all reason, business booms. Into this dark and smoky womb climb many of the most successful artists, writers, and musicians of the day. The colony was a theatre. Yeah. And everybody could go there and be whatever they wanted to be. And sometimes it was a theatre of cruelty, wasn't it? Totally. Hello, uh, my name's Darren Caulfield. I'm an artist and an author. I've exhibited widely around the world with people like Gilbert and George, Howard Hodgkin, etc. And for many years, I belonged to a private drinking club called the Colony Rooms in Soho which is just over the road from where we're standing now. The Colony Rooms is sort of not just a bar, but also a cultural barometer, really, of what was going on in past world London. It was the most fascinating place I've ever found to drink in, and I was a member there for over 20 years before it shut. The club was really dominated by two people. One was Muir Belch, who opened the club in 1948. She was a proprietor. Presided over by Muriel Belcher, famed equally for a kind heart and a barbed wit, and the other was a young, then unknown artist called Francis Bacon, who gravitated into a circle and drank there from the beginning. Muriel always used to say, you've had, your money, you've had their money by 11, then they can fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> it was mostly really known for its outrageous wit and campness. All kinds of people would come along to the club, including royalty and minor celebrities and major celebrities. It became the most important place to drink in Soho. The book is uh, written from the point of view of the members, the people who actually were in the club at the time. The initial idea was from a series of audio tapes that were given to me by the club's last proprietor, Michael Wojas, and they contained various interviews with Francis Bacon, Geoffrey Bernard, Daniel Farson, and Ian Bald. The book contains interviews of more than 50 people who inhabited the club at various different periods between 1948 and its closure in 2008. I did have qualms about being a member. I did want, there were certain questions I wanted to know, like, could I come here in the afternoon and curl up and fall asleep on that sofa without being badgered into drinking vast amounts of alcohol if I didn't want to? This year marks the 10th anniversary of the closing of the club. Though the club has gone, it still carries on. It's the stuff of spurious legends and club folklore. So pull up a drink, perch yourself on a stall, sit on the end of a bar and imagine you're eavesdropping in and read my book. It's wonderful to be there. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs>